Hey, good morning, everyone. Don Gillis from Emerson. It's Fun Fact Friday. I am again at uh, in Sydney, Ohio, at the Coven plant. And uh, today's fun fact: we're going to talk about something we all learn almost immediately in the field, and that is superheat. But more importantly, where do we take superheat, and what is that particular superheat telling us? Okay, what is it? What should it be telling us? All right. Uh, appreciate all the kudos to the people that have been uh, sending thank yous and. I'm glad you're getting something out of it, and if you ever want to talk about a topic, just uh, shoot me an email, don.gillis at emerson.com, okay? So I'm going to start with this. I drew a little diagram in the back here, and I'm going to just touch on two different superheats. Superheat leading, leaving the evaporator, or more importantly, behind that bulb. This is a TXV application, okay? What do we know about the superheat leaving the evaporator? That's telling us... Uh, first of all, that's the superheat if you're on tech support that the OEM or the system designer is going to want to know, okay? Uh, that's the, that's the, refer, uh, the superheat they're going to be referring to. If you're talking to someone at Copeland, uh, you're, they're probably going to want the superheat entering the compressor or one of our competitors, all right? So this superheat is confirming that this TXV is working properly. It's letting us know that it's matching the load, all right? The superheat entering the compressor is making sure that we have vapor going into our compressor. That's also referred to as total superheat. If anyone ever asks you what's the total superheat, they're talking about the, all of the superheat combined, all right? That's the superheat combined. That's the superheat right there, okay? Now, there is a AE Bulletin 1182. Again, you can go to this, our app store, and put Emerson in there. You'll see an app that's called AE. It has a little icon of a book. It's uh, Application Engineers Bulletins. And AE-1182 is gonna tell you that if for some reason you have uncontrollable liquid flood back, which means you're not getting vapor back to the, the vapor pump or the compressor, okay, and you've done everything you can, you've sized the, uh, the refrigerant lines properly, you've trapped if, you've ha if you have to trap, uh, you've added an accumulator, you've done everything you possibly can and you still have liquid refrigerant coming back in the application and you've and you tried everything and worked with the system designer, we're going to ask you to set that superheat at 20 degrees entering the compressor in high load condition. Now that's key, high load condition, okay? The reason for that is if you go into a load a low load condition at night, cooling off, and that refrigerant can't boil off in the evaporator, okay, you may only have six degrees or four degrees or two degrees, but you'll have some degrees of superheat at the compressor. The whole idea is to protect that compressor. That's the only reason we have superheat. We need vapor entering our vapor pump, okay? It's not a hydraulic pump, all right? So let's talk about the refrigerant entering the TXV. Again, uh, TXV is a metering device, all right? It can adjust like an EV. Uh, we have to have our subcooling right, correct, entering the TXV or nothing else matters. The superheat will not be right if you don't have the liquid correct at the metering device on the TXV, okay? So this is adjusting. It has a diaphragm on the top that's connected to a line over here to the bulb that's reading the superheat as it's leaving the evaporator. And the way that works is, first of all, we have primarily liquid entering the evaporator. We're changing from a liquid to a vapor, all right? The majority of it entering that evaporator, think of a spray bottle, a Windex bottle, how it's atomizing, leaving that spray bottle. That's what the TXV is doing. So 65, 75% of it's liquid, the rest of it's vapor. As it starts to boil off, okay, we're boiling off. Sweet, right in the center of the evaporator is what we call our midpoint. That's saturated refrigerant, meaning it's both uh, liquid and vapor, okay? That's the center of it. That's what's on our PT charts. That's what's on our gauges. We're changing, again, saturation is defined. Uh, it's also defined as latent heat. If you were to Google the word latent, you would see the word hidden somewhere. It's a hidden heat. Why is it hidden? Because anytime we're changing state, we're not changing the temperature and latent heat. Uh, picture a, a pot of boiling water on the stove. You put the temperature probe in there at atmospheric pressure, standard atmospheric pressure, 14.7, okay? That temperature probe should stay 212 degrees until the very last drop of water leaves and then it'll go to 213, okay? That one degree is vapor, uh, 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 
any heat added to a vapor above its boiling point. That one degree is one degree of superheat. It's also referred to as sensible heat, okay? So now we're fully vapor as we enter here. The bulb is reading that vapor temperature as it's coming out and adjusting, okay? This bulb, by the way, if you don't know this, is usually nine times out of 10 filled with the same refrigerant that's in the system. So as it heats up, again, there's a pressure temperature relationship there. It's by pressure, it's pushing back, opening that diaphragm on that TXV and either allowing more refrigerant indicated or liquid refrigerant in blue, or it's shutting it down and lessening it if it has too much, uh, too low of superheat back down here, okay? If it's too low of superheat, it's shutting that off, okay? And not allowing as much refrigerant or more refrigerant, pardon me, okay? So primarily liquid coming in, we have this, we're boiling off, we're getting into a vapor, we're reading that, this is adjusting, okay? By the way, if you're in a situation where you have an adjustable TXV, if that, that ever should happen, and someone's been in there kind of messing around with it and adjusting it, and it's all whacked out, um, you, can, you can actually bury that uh, adjustment if it's an adjustable TXV. You can actually uh, crank it all the way to the top or crank it all the way to the bottom, and then, Count the intervals from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. Let's say it's 10, okay? If it's 10 intervals, go back up five about midpoint, and that will get you fairly close, if not exact, to the manufacturer setting on a TXV, all right? Just a little trick that uh, you may or may not know. The idea is not to mess with TXVs. They should be sized properly already, okay? So that's going to be your, oh, a couple AE bulletins. Remember that 225 stay alive, six inches behind the compressor. If you're above 225 degrees on most all compressors, there are some exceptions to that, okay, and I'll give you that exception, okay. Uh, you're getting outside that designed envelope, all right. Doesn't mean anything's damaged, but we need to go back and check our superheat before that. If it's too high here, we need to go up the stream or up the, uh, the, the, the system and find out why. If it's too high there, we need to find out why. If it's correct here and too high here, I like to take both those superheats, maybe this suction line doesn't have insulation on it and it's up in an attic in unconditioned space. It's absorbing that heat. Remember, hot likes to go to cold. That's why we're absorbing heat on the evaporator. We're changing this, it's getting cooler, okay? All right, it's cooling off and we're absorbing that heat that's traveling through either your home, uh, your business, or through the walk-in cooler. We're absorbing that heat, and we're taking that heat and moving it on down the line. Remember, we need that vapor refrigerant to cool that compressor down. If it's too hot, it's not gonna be able to cool that compressor down, and it's gonna be too hot behind that. So if you get up into the 220s, 250 areas, you are getting seriously dangerous. In fact, uh, on some compressors that don't come with internal protection, they are designed from the OEM. They will have some type of protection device right around that six inch mark, five inch mark uh, to actually shut the compressor down, okay? If it gets up to the, the 220, 250, 260, whatever, it will shut that down. It's more like 260, 270 actually. And, but that does vary depending on the refrigerant and the application. When I say application, I mean is it medium, uh, is it low temperature? Air conditioner is considered high temperature, okay? All right, well, that's your fun fact for today. I hope you have a great weekend, a great day. If you're on call, please be careful. I want you to uh, share the knowledge, anything you learned, uh, and I will see you next week. That's your fun fact. My name is Don Gillis. I'm from Emerson. You all take care of each other. Thanks a lot. Bye.